All right, back with some more uh, induction questions. This one's kind of weird, but good brain teaser. A long solenoid of radius A carrying N turns per unit length is looped by a wire with resistance R as shown in the diagram. Part A. If the current in the solenoid is increasing at a constant rate, di dt equal k, what current flows in the loop and which way, left or right, does it pass through the resistor? If the current I in the solenoid is constant, but the solenoid is pulled out of the loop towards the left to a place far from the loop, what total charge passes through the resistor? All right. Let's go ahead and dive in. We're going to use the same thing we've been using as far as what our tools are. So for part A, we know that the field inside, again, quasi-static approximation, is B equal mu naught Ni. Okay, pretty straightforward. We've seen it a million times. Um, so okay, we see that the flux then through this um, cross-sectional area, which is a, a circle, so it's pi A squared, uh, we go ahead and plug in the B field, and we see that our total flux is pi a squared, mu naught ni. And then we see here that the um, EMF, right, what we know from Faraday and the things in the beginning of the chapter is negative d by dt of the flux. Uh, the only thing that's time dependent in this flux is the current. So we have negative pi a squared, mu naught n, di dt. Again, we want the negative sign that restores um we want the negative sign there so it restores the flux that's generated by increasing the current, and we want to stay equalized. That's the whole reason why the negative's there, thanks to Lenz's law. All right, so in magnitude, then, um, we see that uh, E is just equal to pi A squared mu naught in K. Again, the negative sign is not having to do anything with the magnitude. We just want the whole thing. So that's just a copy-paste error. Uh, but we also know that E equals, the EMF is equal to IR uh, sub R times the resistance, okay? So we're looking at the current in the resistor, which is just E divided by R, and we see that we just have this simplified here. Okay, that is just the magnitude. Now we're going to find the direction of the current. So since B on the inside of the solenoid is to the right, again, right-hand rule, and increasing, we know that the field of the loop Okay, because again, Lenz's law, put the negative sign, has to, the field outside of the loop has to point to the left. And if the field is pointing to the left, we know via the right hand rule again, working backwards, that the current is going counterclockwise. So put your thumb in the left hand or pointing to the left, curl your fingers, and you see you get a counterclockwise rotation. All right, so this tells us that if we follow this counterclockwise rotation, the current is actually running from the left to the right through the resistor. Pretty cool. All right, so another setup here for part B, uh, they wanted to know what was the total charge and we can relate the charge and the flux via the current. We know that current is dq by dt, the change in charge, we've seen that before. But we also know via Ohm's law that it's equal to E over R, the EMF over R. So if we plug in definitions, we see this thing here. Um, again, that seems like I'm goofing up on the minus signs. There should be a minus sign on that uh, d phi by dt. Um, but nonetheless, what we're trying to actually show here is that the change in q is equal to uh, the change in phi that's proportional by the resistance. Um, we see that if we integrate it both sides with t, that would cancel out the factors, all that fun stuff, separation. Good to go there. But regardless, we're just looking at the change in q. So with that, uh, what we're saying is that since the change in Q is related to the change in phi or the change in flux, we now need to find what the change in flux was. Given that our flux was already starting at pi A squared mu naught in, if we change that to another point in time, it's still going to be the same thing. We still have the same flux, so we're just taking a difference of a minus since we're moving it. Um, and that's how we get two copies of it, 2 pi A squared mu naught in I. So if we just put that over R, we see that in magnitude, the change in charge is equal to the 2 pi A squared mu naught in I over R. Pretty cool, but uh, be very careful with that change in flux.